welcome everyone. I'm sorry it's a little uh, little less professional than it usually is, but hey, we have fun when we do this, right? No problem. All right, let me just see what's going on and broadcast. Who's got questions for me this morning? I did have a couple of questions emailed in that I did pull up here and I'd love to answer, but you know I answer your questions first, guys. So while I'm sitting here in beautiful Irwin, Tennessee, on the side of the road, type your questions into the Q&A box and I will see them right here. Again, my name is Amy Collins. I'm here every Friday on Free Advice Friday from 10 a.m. until I'm done answering your questions. I got a question from a lovely woman this week in my inbox saying that she had heard me somewhere and she was very, very curious about the best ways to distribute her book. Now we've covered this a few times and I wanna remind you guys that if you've got any, uh, inter Free Advice Friday is a fantastic resource on newshelves.com, but we also have frequently asked questions and so newshelves.com slash FAQ, this question often gets asked, and I have put an answer into that into a blog, but here's my overview on how to properly distribute your print book and your ebook if you want to go wide. Those of you who are curious about whether or not you should go exclusive with Kindle, this is how I do it. I'll just tell you how I do it. I don't. I never go exclusive with Amazon. I never give my ebook exclusive to Kindle because it's important to me that I support all aspects of our industry, not just Amazon. But for a lot of you who are not in my position, especially genre fiction people, using Kindle Select, which gives you access to Kindle Unlimited for a short period of time is a great idea. So if you've written a nonfiction or a fiction book and you don't mind giving Amazon everything for 90 days or even 180 days, Kindle Select is a great option. It gets you Kindle Unlimited reads. It gets you opportunities to market. It gets you the Amazon support you may not get otherwise. But for the rest of you, those of you who have gotten past the first 180 days, 90 days, for those of you who, like me, do not want to support Amazon exclusively, this is how I would do it. This is just my two cents. To start with, I would suggest that you make sure you try and get all the different ways of your book out you can. That means an ebook, an audio book, a paperback. Sure, if you're doing print on demand, hardcover might make sense, especially for your children's book authors, because a four color paperback print on demand is so expensive, you're not very uh, competitive price wise, but you can stay competitive with a hardcover. Libraries and bookstores love competitively priced children's books if they're well done. Print on demand is no problem if you go hardcover. In addition, after that, once you've made the decision what format you're gonna go in and you wanna go wide, may I recommend that you use KDP for Amazon distribution, go ahead. Use Nook or what's now called Press at Barnes and Noble for Barnes and Noble distribution. Use Ingram Spark to get the wholesale distribution into the rest of the bookstore and library market. So those are three different print options for you. KDP for Amazon paperbacks. Use the Barnes and Noble print on demand option, which uh, at one point was called Nook Press, and I now believe it's just called Press It uh, for Barnes and Noble distribution. And use Ingram Spark for everything else. Ingram, you can use all three. Use the same ISBN. You're, what you're doing is you're just distributing your book to three different print-on-demand digital printing companies. That's all. For your ebook, I like Draft to Digital. I'm uh, I'm learning about some other companies that are like Draft to Digital that I'm also liking. I'll get you more information about those later. But at the moment, Draft and then the numeral two, Draft to Digital, is by far your best option at the moment in terms of breadth of distribution. They can get you into Baker and Taylor as an ebook. They get you into Overdrive for an ebook, and those two really need library help. And the other and third thing, when you come to audiobook, you can use ACX, but in most cases, ACX will be um, in most cases ACX will be a good idea if. Um, you really, ha I mean, if you have zero other options financially and you need to, because ACX will give you the option of doing your audiobook 
without spending any money up front. They, can, they will do a split deal with you, but they will ask for a seven year exclusive deal, seven years. But if you go to find away voices, find away voices, uh, and that's the website, findawayvoices.com, you will often find that it, with a, a small investment, a small upfront investment, you will not um, have the same uh, exclusivity. You will not be held to the same rigid standards. So uh, let's. So that is that is all my options. That's a long answer to that question. Uh, bum bum bum. All right. Denise is saying she <laughs> likes coming and hanging out with us on Friday seminars, and she's loving the casual look. Uh, yeah, guys, I, again, I, uh, I didn't plan on doing it this way. I thought I'd be sitting in a nice hotel room and, uh, but things don't always work out the way you plan. And it's more important to me that I answer your questions, even if I don't look good. So here I am. Uh, I, I, I did manage to slap on lipstick, but that's about it. You're in, uh, you see my Block Island hat, uh, uh, go Block Island, uh, big New England fan. So yeah, let's see. Uh, Sonia's asking. Have I ever used Checkly to get Brandon message out? And if so, what were my thoughts about it? And is it worthwhile? I have not personally used Checkly, but I do have two clients who have told me about them. And most of these, both of these, these women who have used them. And I know, I, I don't think that's quite how I, how they spelled it. Um, but I know what you're talking about, Sonia. Both of them liked it very much, uh, but both of them were using it, using the, the free version. And I think they went up to like, there was a $4.99 uh, one that they tried and they, and they were fine with. So for those of you, I do, I've never personally used it though. I love Paperly. I love all about all the Lees, but uh, Checkly, I, I have heard about from two authors that I do trust and they both had good things to say about it, but I've never used it personally. All right. So who else has some questions for me? I'm going to just check the question box real quick. Um, let's see. I answered that one. Come on, guys. Any other questions, uh, happening this morning? Um, oh, Wendy, how are you? Good morning. Uh, please, Wendy, uh, you got any other questions for me? Anything about rights? Anything that I can answer that'll really stump me in front of people while I'm sitting on the side of the road? That'd be awesome. All right. I'm going to just check the email real quick. You'll notice that my screen was frozen. Uh, but that is because I am checking my email to make sure there are no other questions that came in for Free Advice Friday. Uh, bum, bum, bum. All right. That is it. Wow. You guys are awful quiet this morning. And uh, while I, uh, I okay. Uh, Linda is wanting information about getting book into libraries. Uh, so can you guys see me? Please go to the Q&A box. Did I come back? Are we all good? Can you hear me? I hope you can. So Linda, you would like to get information about getting your book into libraries. And that is kind of a, an overarching question. Uh, but here is my, my short answer on that. Uh, I actually have a totally free uh, video. If you go to realfastlibrarymarketing.com slash Amy, realfastlibrarymarketing.com slash Amy, and I will type that into the chat box. There is a one hour video. There's a little sales spiel at the end. You can ignore that part, but, um, or don't, you know, buy the course, but I actually give you a one hour overview of exactly how to get your books into libraries. It includes things like you have to be in a wholesaler. You have to be an Ingram. And you, you have to have at least, you have to be able to give libraries at least a 20%, preferably a 30% discount, which means you need to give the wholesaler a 50% discount. Other things that work about going into libraries, um, they have to uh, be able to see your book in the MARC database, M-A-R-C, the MARC database. There's a whole bunch that goes into getting books into libraries. And I have taught an entire course about this called the Real Fast Library Marketing Course. I partnered with Daniel Hall on it. But we actually offer an overview about how libraries work and how to get into libraries in a totally free video available at real, realfastlibrarymarketing.com slash Amy. If you go there, you'll be able to see that. If that's not specifically what you were looking for, no problem. Linda, just type another more specific question into the question box and I'll be happy to answer it. Sonia is asking if Kirkus Review is a worthwhile investment. No. 
I'm just going to be really frank here. Kirkus probably hates me for this, but a Kirkus Discoveries review, and I, I have an author slash publisher out in the West Coast that's dealing with this now, and he and I are disagreeing on this, but, and, and if he wants to chime in, but here's the deal. Bookstores, libraries, industry professionals, we know what a Kirkus Discoveries review is. We know that you paid $450 or so. Hear that train? Isn't that lovely? We know that you paid for it. And so we completely discount it. And it's not just me. Go in and talk to a librarian. Go in and talk to a bookseller. Ask them. They will tell you the same thing I'm telling you. I promise, guys. It's lovely to, to, to get the Kirkus Discoveries review because it's an honest review. That editor will give you an honest review. But what are you going to be able to do with it? You're not going to be able, unfortunately, to take it to a bookseller or a librarian and get anything real for it. If you've paid for a Kirkus Discoveries review, yes, you will end up in their quarterly thing. You may even get boosted up to their 150 must-see books, but you're listed as an independently published Kirkus Discoveries review, no matter where you are, and the librarians do not give that anywhere near the value they would give a Kirkus review. Anyone can buy a Kirkus Discoveries review, but a Kirkus editorial review, that's different. Now, if you go to Kirkus.com and you try and find out on their site how to submit your book for a review, they will keep funneling you towards the give us $500 option of Kirkus Discoveries. It's not actually easy to find the application process to just submit your book for an editorial review for free, but you can. You can absolutely do that. And I have made that available on a link on my blog. If you go to newshelves.com slash blog, and in the search bar, just type in the word Kirkus, you will find that I've written a blog sometime in the last few months that has the links to the free editorial submission requirements for Kirkus. And that's what you should do instead. Sonia, I hope that answers your question. Uh, let's see. I love that people are trying to call me and text me and Skype me during Free Advice Friday. Does no one know what I do on Fridays at 10 a.m.? All right. Sue is saying she published with a hybrid publisher years ago and that I know the name and she had to buy a lot of author copies and she needs to sell some of these books for income. She has a two-part question. She wants to contact a warm list to say her book is for sale cheaper than Amazon. And does she need to engage for a while first or can she just go and advertise then sell? Sue, are you talking about a warm cold list that are, that are readers? Do you have an email list to your readers and do you engage, need to engage with them first or can she just go advertise the sale? Sue, if it's a warm list, that means you probably already have been engaging with them. If it's a cold list, I would definitely engage with them first. So if you bought the list or if it's a list that you've not contacted in over a year, yes, start the interchange. Try and go back and forth with them a little bit. See if you can offer them a, something of value before you start hitting them up by selling the book. Um, now, I know you and I know your book and I know there's a lot of value there, but trying to sell to them directly, they need to trust you before they turn over their credit card number to you or their PayPal info. If you're going to sell your book, I strongly recommend that you put it on a site like Etsy or eBay or a site that people trust and that they know they can get their money back if you don't actually mail them the book. People who don't know you, who don't trust you, now I, I trust you, I know exactly who you are, but total strangers feel a little more comfortable giving their money through a third party um, website that where they know they have some, some uh, recourse if things don't go well. So that's my advice there. So if it's a warm list, you don't need to warm them up because you've already been contacting them. But if it's not your list or if it's somebody else's or it's a cold list you haven't touched in a couple of years, then yes, warm them up first. And then, uh, then after you warm them up, uh, go through a site that they can trust. You can actually sell your books on amazon.com through a seller central account you just have to give amazon 99 cents for every sell and you can sell the books more cheaply that way any way you go about it just i would use a third party site that is um that has a little more trustworthy name recognition than your own sonia wants to know if i'll be driving through new jersey i will not uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna head up tennessee i'm gonna um 
go up, uh, you know, and run up through Pennsylvania and then hit, because I'm in Rochester, I'm in the other side of New York. Uh, Wendy is waiting on one final permission to fix all the copyright issues. And she's wondering uh, how long to wait. She contacted him about two weeks ago and a follow up a few days ago. How long should she wait before she just pulls it? She really wants to leave it in. Wendy, I would wait three to four weeks. Um, I, I, I'm, sometimes, I'm still answering emails a month out. You followed up yesterday or a few days ago. Follow up one more time on, let's say, Tuesday or Wednesday. Again, it's August. I don't know if this person is a U.S. citizen or not, but, you know, we don't always, uh, we get a little behind during back to school time and with kids and, and, you know, but after Labor Day, most of us really dig in again. I'd uh, follow up again after the Labor Day holiday and then give them one more week and then yank it. That would be my advice. Uh, Annette is saying the most effective ways to market a novel through audiobook published on ACX. Well, Annette, depending on your contract with ACX, if you've signed an exclusive deal with them and you really want to push yourself through Amazon, I would suggest that you use Amazon's marketing options. Uh, go through AMS or what used to be AMS, Amazon Marketing Services. But if you go to AMS.com or Amazon.AMS.com, it'll link you to all of their different marketing options that are available to you. That is the most effective way to go about it. Another way that I do is I will quite often do short videos with excerpts of my clients' audiobooks on into actual video format, and I post them on YouTube, and then I boost and advertise those YouTube videos with similar authors' audiobook ads. YouTube is a fantastic way to advertise an audiobook because you can play the audiobook, you know, the first two minutes or whatever on a video on YouTube. Boosting audiobook sales to Amazon through Facebook also works because they're a wonderful way to share video. But I would suggest that you use a professional video. You know, don't try and do this yourself. Go get you know a snippet of your audio. Make sure with your contract you're allowed to share a small section for marketing purposes and, and send it to somebody to create a great video. Let's say a three to four minute video tops that is not all advertising. It is simply just, hey guys, I've got a new audio book out. Here's the first three minutes. Give it a listen. That's all it has to say. And then go right into a, a, a segment of the audio book. It's a really exciting part. And then have a link to your Amazon page so people can buy. Those are three ways that I would, uh, not knowing your contract with ACX, but that I would do. Uh, Steve is, is asking if she wants, if he wants to get a lot of print quotes from a printer, how would he do this? Well, you can go through a broker, Stephen. Uh, there's a couple of print brokers that I know, of course, sitting by the side of the road. I don't have any of their email addresses with me at the moment, but here are some printers that I love. Bang Printing, Google Bang Printing, love them. Uh, uh, let's see, Thompson Shore uh, has got it, but if you're looking for digital print quotes or offset, because I'm talking about offset printers. If you're looking for digital print quotes um, and you want a number of them, uh, you know, I haven't found anyone better for digital printing, truthfully, than either Lightning Source or CreateSpace in terms of pricing. Nobody will beat, sorry, KDP print, not CreateSpace. Nobody will beat KDP and Ingram Spark for pricing. Um, and the quality, truthfully, is not, it's not bad. Um, I've had some really, really good luck lately with Lightning Source and slash Ingram Spark or KDP, which used to be called Create Space. But if you truly want other print quotes, especially offset print quotes, if you want to go overseas, I love Imago. I M A G O, based in New York. If you want to stay domestic, my favorite is Bang Printing. Bang, like bang of a gun, B A N G. And, um, in Canada, Frisians can't be beat. Love Frisians. Sheridan is great. Like them too. So those are some of my suggestions uh, because I wasn't sure which kind of printing you wanted. Wendy's saying that I was going to launch a new insider program. When will it be available? Wendy, it's available. Go to bestsellerbuilders.com slash insiders. Bestsellerbuilders.com slash insiders. And you will be able to see a short video from me and a whole list of what it includes. And we are offering it at a very, very deep discount, $595 for lifetime membership 
including the closed Facebook group where you can get questions faster than on Fridays. Um, all of my videos, all of Daniel Hall's content, it's all in one place and we update it. Every month we're putting new videos, new content, new interviews up there. And as well, you get contact with me and my staff via email and Facebook uh, to get your questions answered more quickly. That's at bestsellerbuilders.com slash insiders. Bestsellerbuilders.com slash insiders. Thank you for asking. We launched it last week, but it's still on the soft launch. Um, it's eventually going to be more expensive, but right now, again, it's lifetime membership for $595 because we're still working all the bugs out. Uh, Sue is saying if she was going to put a sale on Facebook, she only has a personal page, but it's mainly for biz business people. Uh, Sue, you're not going to be able to advertise or promote anything through promoted posts through a personal profile. Um, you need to have a page. Profiles, which allow you to have up to 5,000 friends, are for personal interaction. You are going to need a business page before you tell your followers that the book is for sale. Um, now, if you're just going to post on your profile to your friends on Facebook that the book is for sale and to you know, email you and, and send you a PayPal thing and, and you'll autograph it and mail it to you, if it's going to be a private interaction, that's fine. You can, you know, if it's going to be a dozen or two dozen people, great. But if you're trying to do a major push, you, you should go through a, a uh, Facebook page. That is what Facebook pages are designed for. They're designed for business interaction. Uh, you can promote them. You can boost them. They can share them. But things that you share on your personal profile don't get out to a lot of people. They only get out to 10 or 20% of your followers, and you can't boost them and share them out. All right, next question. Uh, do I, uh, Stephen is asking if I recommend any of the free or 99 cent Facebook groups or sites. And is there a way to do one of those promotions effectively or run a promotion campaign? Absolutely. Steve, I have two authors, they're clients of mine that I work with that we ran BookBub, 99 cent or $1.99. Uh, we just did one for Hank Philippi Ryan with her publisher. Um, and we promoted like crazy through a whole bunch of different sites. Uh, Rebecca Reads, uh, if, if you want to go free, free booksy is great. There's a whole list of sites that I can recommend and I have on my blog. I've created a blog where I have actually have the links to the sites I like. So I believe it's on people we like as well. I've got uh, newshelves.com slash people we like. But um, Steve, if you want a list of those resources, if you go to newshelves.com slash blog, and you just type in the word um, bookbub, you will see uh, in the search engine, if you type in uh, bookbub into the search bar up at the top right-hand corner, at least it's right-hand on my, on my computer, um, you will be brought to the blog that lists five or six sites that, I, that we love and that we use that will allow you to promote 99 cent or free eBooks. Um, I do not use any Facebook groups for that, partially because I don't enjoy, um, Quite often, you will get uh, frozen or kicked out of a, of a number of other groups if you just use Facebook exclusively. So I go through the professional sites. They're very inexpensive because um, some of them are like $20, $30 to promote your book as a 99 cent, and I really like them. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Uh, Sue is saying social media. Should you just pick one or more social media platform like Pinterest and advertise the book for sale without building engagement? Yeah. If that's how you want to do it, I buy things on Facebook and I buy things off of Instagram all the time. Those are my two favorites. Um, I buy, believe it or not, I know it's hard to tell today, but I actually buy hair tools and makeup and stuff that I find uh, on, on Facebook and Instagram on ads all the time. If the video is compelling enough and if I like the person who's talking, you know, I'll throw, you know, $29.95 at something or a new so, so yes, uh, I like Instagram and Facebook for that. Um, I, I'm not as familiar with Pinterest ads because I don't spend as much time on Pinterest and because I find that I will quite often purchase something when the video is engaging. Uh, there is a, uh, there's a woman out there. Uh, she's got a series of, I think it's uh, Meet the Jenkins or, you know, and then there's also the Head Candy people. There's some great videos out there. Uh, Andrea Marcellus with the And Life app is doing a great job with it right now. 
but these videos really engage people and get them to buy. So that's what I would suggest, a couple of, of interactive, well-done videos, and it'll get you going. Um, bum, bum, bum. Steve is saying, do I have any suggestions to use the book as a fundraising item and get her book at a, and get the book at a discount? Stephen, if you're suggesting that you want to uh, offer your book to organizations and, and as a deep discount so that they can use it as a fundraising item, absolutely. Um, put a nice kit together. You got a, you know, a physical copy of your book and a, uh, you know, and a, and a beautiful four color sheet talking about all the different fundraising ideas or opportunities that are available. Offer them the book at a 50% discount and they can, they can sell the book uh, to their, to their people and they can keep 50% and you'll keep 50%. Absolutely. Um, those are my suggestions. You're not going to be able to do this as well with an email. You, you have to actually show them the book. Corporate sales and large organizations. And I recently learned this from Dave Chilton from the wealthy barber. He and I did an interview this week that I'm going to put up next week, uh, or actually this weekend, for, uh, on how to do corporate sales and how to do fundraising sales and corporate sales. There's a real knack to it. And David has created an entire course about this. And he and I interviewed on this. Um, but I would suggest for fundraisers that you start putting a four page, excuse me, a four color, one page sheet together, focus strictly on how organizations can use your book for fundraising purposes and send it out to them. And then, you know, anyone who's interested, send them an actual copy of the book in a kit. All right. How are you guys doing? How are these questions going? Um, I'm, I'm looking down. Is there anything in my, I'm, I'm still seeing questions come in. So you must be able to hear me. Uh, I hope everything's going well. Uh, let me see real quick and just make sure that there's nothing in the chat box. Um, bum, bum, bum. Let me just check the, check the tack, ch uh, chat box real quick to make sure nobody has got anything. All right. It all looks good. All right. Linda, I see you've got your, your hand raised, and that's interesting, but I, 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 don't know, uh, I don't know what to do with that. And to get your chat, your question answered, just go into the Q&A box um, uh, and, and type in questions like you did, like your question right here. Your book on for self-care for women, you want to offer it in your area in New England to small groups that go with the book. Is it best to offer this for free? No. Uh, Linda, people have money. And, and, and giving your book away for free is, is, is not the same thing as offering review copies of your book. So let me make sure I'm, I'm understanding your question. If you would like local organizations to use your book, then send them two or three copies of your book for review purposes, and then offer to sell it to them at a deeply discounted, deeply discounted price. But people need to pay for your content. Now, they need to understand that your content is worth it first. So you give them a couple of samples and all of you guys should have a couple hundred copies of your book in your offices or in your garage ready to go for review purposes. And you should also have your, your book set up in a PDF and a Mobi and an EPUB so that people can download and review the electronic copies for corporate purposes, for review purposes, I love Book Connect. I also love Book Funnel. Bookfunnel.com is a great one. Um, these two are two inexpensive ways to get the all the electronic versions of your book up. Um, but Linda, I would not suggest that you just offer the book for free. Uh, maybe you want to go and speak at some of these organizations in New England. And so you will waive your speaking fee, but they need to buy a copy of your book for everyone who comes to the talk. Um, I would not recommend offering your book for free, but I do recommend that you guys print hundreds of copies for review copies, and those are given away for free. Uh, Sonia's asking, what autopilot marketing do I recommend if you're not able to consistently work on your marketing for a three-week period? She's going to be traveling in Asia and not sure what to do besides AMS. Um, she uses Hootsuite for social media post scheduling. Sonia, I would recommend in terms of islet market, um, islet autopilot marketing is not a great idea. Now, scheduling your social media and scheduling your AMS ads is a great idea. Um, scheduling out emails, uh, also a great idea. You can do that through MailChimp. Go to MailChimp, get a couple emails going. But make sure that your Hootsuite posts and that your 
your MailChimp emails and you're keeping the, the, the funnel going, that you mention that you're in Asia a lot. You mention that you're out and that you have scheduled these emails ahead of time while you're out of the country. Your Hootsuite posts or recur posts, uh, social media posts, you know, actually put in, um, you know, here's some of my favorite blogs from 2018 that are still valid in 2019. Here's a couple blasts from the past. I'm scheduling these because I'm out of the country for the next three weeks. Make sure you're honest with people. When I'm on the road, as you guys can see, I clearly tell people I'm on the road. You should do the same thing. So MailChimp, Hootsuite, Recur Post, and, um, you know, embrace it. Run with it. Tell, you're like, to be out and traveling for a couple of weeks that's wonderful i plan on taking all of labor day off and i will see you guys on tuesday actually i'll see you next friday let's see um sue is saying uh she does have an email list and for her list should she pull the list to see who has bought the book in the past while engaging too she'd really like to segregate them out for follow-up so she doesn't advertise to those who have already bought the book and i could send them more valuable info about how do you so that's a great idea um you know set up the poll online, uh, set it up in a way either through SurveyMonkey or Google Docs or do what you need to. Make sure that you don't ask them just to email you back because most of them won't. But if they can click, and if you say it in your email, I have a, a one question, a one question poll I want you to answer. You know, have, you know, do you already own my book? Don't even ask them if they bought it. Do you already own my book? Yes or no. And if they can click on that and it goes right to a page where it says, thank you very much, then you're in great shape. You, you can also set those up through MailChimp. MailChimp has got a great polling option. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Annette is saying, should she upload her, the whole or portion of her audio book for YouTube for publicity? Annette, I don't know what your contract is with anyone. I don't remember, but I, what I do know about you is I believe your audio book is actually through ACX. So if that's the case, you may not be allowed to upload uh, the whole of your ebook and only a teeny, teeny portion of it for, uh, for marketing purposes on YouTube. So check your contract. If you own the contract and the rights and the distribution to your audio book, I love uploading entire chapters of books onto YouTube for publicity purposes. If you guys go to YouTube right now and type in full length audiobook, you will find thousands of audiobooks available on YouTube for you to listen to. Full length audiobooks. They're wonderful. And that is a great idea for my authors that have six, seven, or eight books. If you only have one book, it's not a great idea. But as you guys know, keep writing. I need you guys writing more books because I want your first book or two available for free everywhere so that you can start getting readers for books six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's how that works. All right. Stephen is saying, can it ever hurt to author? Can it ever hurt an author? to make the book too low. For example, he's seen some authors do a free plus shipping books or other authors do half off price plus shipping. <laughs> do I recommend either of these for a marketing campaign? I do, I do always recommend that you, when you're trying to go after a new audience, that you lower the, the bar price-wise for them, but not to such an extent that you look cheap. And um, Stina Holmes, a wonderful author whom I love, New York Times bestselling author, I work with her on some marketing stuff. She's really convinced me, she has taught me that if all you do when you talk about your book is, is discount it, you're going to train people to only buy your book on discount and that's not a good idea. So of course it can hurt an author if that's all you do. But Stephen, if you've written a book about paying for college, there are two or three times a year when it would make a great deal of sense to advertise your book at a discount and sell it directly to, to folks. So coming out with a $1.99 promo or a 99 cent promo and getting a book bub listing for your book at certain key times of the year when parents are really freaking out about how to pay for college would be a great idea. Um, but, you know, like Sonia, whose book is about for women on trying to decide whether or not they're going to get divorced and how to go about that and the right way to go about that. There's not really a season for that. I mean, there is, unfortunately, right after the holidays usually is a big one for women who are like done and right after summer. Um, but, you know, divorces come year round and to try to make that decision. Unhappy marriages are being addressed 24 seven. So that would be a little different advice for Sonia. I would not suggest that she does a deep discount for her book seasonally. 
Uh, so the answer is it depends on the kind of book, I am afraid. Wendy says the link isn't working. All right, well, um, uh, Wendy, I will send you the link. It, it should be bestsellerbuilders.com slash insider or insiders. Uh, maybe it doesn't have an S on the end of it. I'm not sure. I am sorry about that. Ah, oh, dear. I, uh, I love when I do things free and easy on the side of the road. Linda is asking, uh, is a book about self-care for women, does it lend itself, uh, if it, let's see, it's, 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 in the book, The Heart of Self-Care for Women, lends itself to be broken down into parts that get out. And I'm thinking of a blogger other ways. Yes, Linda, that is absolutely true. 100% of my books, the best-selling author that Daniel Hall wrote and that he allowed me very graciously to, to put some chapters in, but uh, the best-selling author, The Right Way, all of my book is available in other bits of content spread out over the world. I've got a blog here. I do an interview there. I've got a YouTube video on this. I've got, I do an article over here. If you actually spent 12 to 13 hours, you could piece together by tracking me down on Google and put my book together on your own. But nobody does it that way. They want my book because I offer a chapter here, a bit of advice there. That is exactly how to go about it. Don't offer the book for free, but offer the content for free everywhere in different segments. That's how you grow an audience. Absolutely. Um, Sonia is saying, if you want to do a social media ad, what kind of content do you recommend for a video ad? I love, if you're going to be advertising and driving sales to Amazon, what I love to do is, and I, I, I use a guy in my office, Connor Rowan. He works for me full time. He's in the office. He's terrific. He does these videos beautifully. And if you guys need any help with them, he's very inexpensive. I think he can do an entire video for about $200. It's terrific. But what he does is these gorgeous swooping in of the cover and then your Amazon reviews, one sentence, rave reviews from all these five-star reviews you got on Amazon. Best book I ever read, five stars, Jeanette. Uh, changed my life, five stars, Alexander. Um, and he does these short 20 second videos that just shows all these great reviews that you got on Amazon. And then at the end, there's a hot link to your Amazon page. That's one way to use video to drive ads through Facebook and, and Instagram and any place that, including YouTube, that allows for video. That's one video ad. I'm not as crazy about the video ads that are book trailers that tell the, oh, there's a Harley. Oh, it's a little sporty pulling out and a road king. Okay, well, there's, you know, two motorcycles just pulled out. That's what that noise was. But may, I wish I was on my motorcycle today. It's such a beautiful day, but I'll have to be, uh, I'll have to be satisfied with uh, being on it when I get home this weekend. But anyway, Sonia, that is my favorite way to advertise to drive sales to Amazon. I then would do an ad and drive sales to Barnes and Noble. Don't just drive sales to Amazon, guys. That's weird. Um, you know, do ads for that have you know your endorsements, and then just say available wherever books are sold, and and take have the the click link take to a page on your website that where they can buy it through IndieBound, they can buy it through Kobo, they can buy it internationally because you don't know where these videos are going to end up. I was just hanging out with Wendy H. Jones yesterday for an author signing. And she was trying to buy Hank Philippi Ryan's book, Trust Me, but her cell phone is set up for the UK. She's from Scotland. She's in the US visiting and it kept going to Kobo UK. And, you know, it, so you don't know where your ads are going to end up when you see something. So make sure that you create a page on your website that has all the options for all the different permutations you could possibly think of and then drive the video there. All right. Linda, hi, good morning. I am going to get your registration to you. I promise I will take care of that today. Uh, as you can see, I'm still traveling, but I swear it's going to happen. I'm going to see you in New York. It's going to be awesome. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Uh, Sue is saying if she too was thinking about a fundraising option, should it be 50% off retail or 50% off of what Amazon sells it for? No, 50% off retail price. 50% off retail price. You cannot control what Amazon sells your book for they make those discount decisions based on their own logarithms. Do not go chasing after them. It's, it's a fool's errand. Just if, if your book is $49.95, then offer the book for $24.95. I think I did the math right there. I'm pretty sure I did. 
So there you go. Um, bum, bum, bum. I answered Sonia's question. Uh, Annette is, uh, wants to know if putting a third of her audio book up on YouTube with a link to purchase is, to Audible is good marketing sense. She owns the rights and can go anywhere with her audio book. She does not have an exclusive to ACX or, or Audible. Good on you, Annette. Fabulous. I wouldn't do a third. Uh, put a chapter up, wait a week, put another chapter up, wait a week, put another chapter up, start putting chapters up and stop when you get about halfway in and then st and see what happens. I would put up one chapter at a time and then and make sure you put a call to action at the end of the video. To order the book, go to Audible or for chapter two, you know, subscribe here and, and have them subscribe to your YouTube channel. You want to get something for putting your book up on YouTube that way. All right, I answered that. Uh, Wendy, thank you again for asking about my insider program. I'm so sorry, the link doesn't work. I'm, I, again, it's a soft launch. I swear I will send it to you. Um, let's see. Book trailer, Sue's reminding me I said I'm not a fan. <laughs> Sue, I'm glad you're listening because heaven knows I'm not, clearly. I'm not a big fan of the one or two minute videos that talk about the plot of your book or, or have, try to do, try to do like a movie, you know, where the guy's walking down the hall and you see a woman's feet walking towards him and she's like, you know, Susan was saying, and no, no, I, you know, guys use these, these videos to prove to people that other people find your book valuable and then send them to a place where they can read about your book. That is my advice. I do not find that we get anywhere near the sales or the lift when we're describing what a book is using video. To do that right, you have to spend thousands of dollars on truly fine video work. And who's got that kind of time or money? Not me. Uh, oh, Denise wants to know the name of the video person. We, um, New Shelves does uh, these sorts of videos uh, in our office. His name is Connor Rowan. And if you just email Connor, C-O-N-O-R at newshelves.com, or you can, email, uh, you can email me at amy at newshelves.com, I will hook you guys up. Connor does them very inexpensively for me, and I know he'd be happy to do them for any of you. He's really good at them. Is there a way to have customers purchase from the store, but have Amazon or another third party ship and fulfill? Yes, it's called Fulfillment by Amazon, FBA, Fulfillment by Amazon. There's also a great company, Brett Ridgeway, owns a company called Speaker Fulfillment, and it's sub uh, company, Author Fulfillment. But if you go to Speaker Fulfillment, Brett Ridgeway and his company there, they do a fantastic, inexpensive job fulfilling third-party shipments. They're, they're the cheapest around, but they're also one of the most, they're the most lovely people to work with. So it's speakerfulfillment.com. Brett, B-R-E-T-T -T, Ridgeway is his name, is the owner. I'm sure you won't speak with him, but, um, but fulfilled by Amazon is one option, but speaker fulfillment is another. All right. Uh, yes, Stephen is saying he wants to, um, he wants to get fulfillment out through his site. And Speaker Fulfillment, also known as Author Fulfillment, Brett Ridgeway, Google him. If you can't find speakerfulfillment.com, it may be .net, but that is my, my far hands down, my favorite way. And tell Brett or Speaker Fulfillment that Amy Collins said hi and that I sent you. Woo! It is 1045 and I did it on the side of the road in Irwin, Tennessee. Um, guys, you're fabulous. I promise I will be back next Friday. I'll be sitting in my office. Uh, Sue uses speaker fulfillment. Uh, Sue, I hope you reckon, you, you uh, concur that they're a good company, uh, but Sue uses them and she likes them very much. Uh, at least I think she does. That's, I think that's what she's saying. I have gotten through all my questions. It is 1045. This would, this was free advice Friday. Uh, my lovely assistant, Anna, is going to get this edited down. She's going to make me look good. She's going to, you know, put makeup on my face, I'm sure. And uh, get this up on newshelves.com slash F-A-F. Newshelves.com slash F-A-F is the site where you can sign up to join me live every Friday. You can watch these live on YouTube and video on my replay channel. And I look so forward to seeing you guys next Friday and getting together where I'm going to help you any way I can during Free Advice Friday. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.